Aliens. If you've been photographing space for as long as I have, you've probably seen things in your images that you can't explain. Unidentified flying objects flying through space where there should be nothing. What is it? Could us astrophotographers be the first to witness a higher intelligence contact from other alien extraterrestrial intelligence? Or maybe we can just science the shit out of it for five seconds and you can tell your crazy uncle to calm the f down. In today's episode I'll be showing you how to identify asteroids using the PixInsight Asteroid Database ephemeris files and maybe a little basic photometry as well so that when you get bored of making pretty pictures you can chase little dots of light around in the sky. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. In order to justify the expensive equipment we've bought to make our hobby work, you may need to justify it by explaining to your significant other that this is for science, and there's no better vendor to prove that than High Point Scientific. High Point Scientific are an astronomy vendor in the United States with a price match guarantee, and they fully support their equipment, and they've got science in the name, so it just makes it look better on that tax invoice at the end of the year. So use the links below or tell them I sent you. So here's how it went down. I was photographing M16, the Eagle Nebula, live on Twitch this week. We had a really good run of clear weather, so I was live streaming what I was doing as I was doing it. And one of the things I do when the exposures come in is I blink them so that I can see if there's anything moving in the images. Stars normally don't move from frame to frame. So if you do see something moving, you know it's something that we could possibly identify as an asteroid or a comet or something like that. And that's exactly what happened. We found something, check it out. We got an asteroid. Can you guys see that? We got one! Once I knew that there was something in the frame that was definitely not a star, the next trick was to identify. Normally I'd use Astrometrica, but this new Pix Insight method is actually super easy and works quite well. You can clearly see the asteroid moving across the frame here. So that's pretty cool, but now we have to identify the thing. We want to open up one frame that we know has the asteroid in it. So I'm going to open up one of the frames here and we're going to do a script image analysis image solver. And all of these details should be in your FITS header anyway, so you don't need to tell it anything here. It just knows from the capture software, the date, time, and the rough coordinates of the image. So we can just hit okay. It'll go off and run that solve, has no problems. Now I'm gonna go into script, render, annotate image. Now this is where you'll need to go off to the Pix Insight website because we want a custom catalog in here. It has stars, Messier catalog, NGCs, but we need to create these custom ZEF files. And for that, you'll need to hit plus, go to cut custom ZEF files, okay. And there'll be space here to add in three files where you need to connect the asteroid files that you've downloaded from the PixInsight website. There's 10 of them, so you need to set up a bunch of these. So I have four custom ZEF files set up in here, which you can see there, all ticked. And now I should just be able to annotate the image. So I'll just click on OK. Off it goes. And we have an annotated image. So I'm going to zoom in here so that it sort of matches what we've got in the blink, makes it easy to make them correspond. And there we have it. We see the asteroid flying in the animation here, uh, but we also see it's labeled it. It's annotated it with its exact designation. 38355-1999-RB152. So now, so now that we know what it is, we can go and look it up on the Small Bodies database on the NASA website and we'll learn a lot more from there. Now that we know what the asteroid is, the next step was to head over to the Small Body Lookup database on the NASA website. And this allows me to see a whole bunch of information. And it's just really interesting to find out that this particular asteroid is three kilometers across, was discovered in 1999 by the Linear Survey and was coming for its close approach on the 10th of August, which is soon. It's not going to hit us or anything like that, but I was curious to find out what else I could find out about this asteroid. Now it's one thing to find an asteroid by accident, but now I wanted to go back and find it on purpose. 
And to do that, I also wanted to get the best exposure possible because I was taking three minute subs before and depending on how fast the asteroid's going, it could trail or smear on the images. They didn't appear too smeared to me, but I wanted to work out the exact exposure. To do this, we need to find out its mean motion per day, which we can find on the Minor Planet Center website. The asteroid has a mean daily motion of 0.25 degrees per day. So we can calculate this out, right? I want to find out how much it takes to move the asteroid by one pixel. And I know my telescope samples at 0.4 arc seconds per pixel. So 0.255 degrees per day divided by 86,400 seconds equals 0.00000295.1 degrees per second. Times that number by 3,600 to convert degrees to arc seconds and we get 0.01 arc seconds per pixel of movement for this asteroid. Now if I divide my telescope 0.4 arc seconds per pixel sampling by that number, we get 37 seconds, which is how many seconds it will take the asteroid to move from one pixel to another pixel on my telescope setup. This is a great example of why it's good to know your telescope sampling, uh, and you can find that out on the Bintel calculator which I developed, links down in the description. So I've switched from the hydrogen alpha filter, which was for pretty pictures, to a red filter, which is probably the best you can do if you don't have a proper photometry filter. I then ran my 37 second exposure loop, and it was definitely much fainter and harder to see, and I probably would have missed it if I didn't know it was there in the first place. I did find it, however, so I decided to run it through Astro Image J. Now this software is free, but it takes some configuring and it's a bit of a spaceship, so it deserves a whole other video of its own. There are other YouTubers who have done a better job than I will do of explaining how it works. But essentially you have to open the image sequence, find the asteroid, measure the sky background, run it through astrometry.net to solve every single exposure, and then click on the star you want to measure the light curve for, and then a bunch of reference stars around it. That gave me a bit of a dog's breakfast of a light curve, but it is a light curve and I do see a bit of a trend. I can see where the clouds messed up my data and I'd really like to see what it would look like if I could get a full four hour straight run of clean seeing on this. I think my light curve would look a bit better. But why do I even care about a light curve? Light curves are fundamental to astronomy. They're the reason why we can detect exoplanet with dips in their light profiles. For an asteroid, a light curve can help reveal the rotation around its own axis. And with enough good data, we can even infer its shape mathematically with a 3D model. It's certainly showing some possibilities, so that's something I'll continue to practice with. Of course, all wasn't lost entirely. We imaged comet Panstars during the live stream, which was exciting to see live. And I didn't have my color camera on, but it's still a cool looking image of a comet. Anyway, fun to see. And finally, the whole reason I was in that area of the sky in the first place was M16 before I got distracted with all of this asteroid stuff. So here's M16 if I've finished it by now. Hope you enjoyed this detour away from the pretty picture stuff to more scientific photometry, stuff that you can do with your own consumer grade astronomy equipment from your backyard, which I think is pretty cool. Anyway, my name is Dylan O'Donnell and you've been watching Star Stuff. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.